Hello and welcome to Eburn Entertainment. In my last video, I promised that I would post some test results from using the IETS GT300 with my Dell G5 SE laptop. Well, I finally got around to doing just that. If you're interested in the laptop and knowing what drivers, etc., I was using for these tests, I'll put those details in the video description. And for those of you that are only interested in the cooling pad, I've already kept you all waiting long enough, so let's jump straight into it. All of the tests with the cooling pad were performed with the fans on their maximum speed setting. Kicking it off with the idle temperatures, using the GT300, the average GPU temperature saw a reduction of a whopping 33.4 degrees C down from 59.9 to just 36.5, while the average GPU temperature saw an even bigger reduction of 37 degrees from 66.9 without the GT300 to 29.9 degrees with it. The maximum temperatures saw an even more impressive temperature reduction using the GT300. The maximum GPU temperature at idle was reduced from 63 degrees to nearly half that at 32 degrees. The maximum GPU temperature saw the biggest reduction though, going from 88.4 degrees without the cooling pad to less than half that at 41.1 degrees C. Next, let's have a look at the Cinebench temperatures before we look at the scores. Without the GT300, the maximum GPU temperature reached 71 degrees C. Now, I know that Cinebench isn't hitting the GPU, but it's clearly quite impacted by the CPU's temperature. With the GT300, the GPU temperature was 51 degrees, a reduction of 20 degrees C. Rather counterintuitively, the CPU actually ran cooler without the cooling pad than it did with it. Without it, it only reached 99.5 degrees C. Maybe only is a bit of a strong word there, but you get what I mean. Uh, while with the cooling pad, it reached 104.5. I wonder if it was the temperature of another component holding back the CPU temperature here. Perhaps the MOSFETs? I don't know. Whatever it was, the CPU being able to reach this higher temperature seemed to have made quite a significant difference to the Cinebench scores achieved. The CPU achieved a score more than 10% higher with the GT300 cooling pad uh, than it did without it. That is, it got a Cinebench score of 7,408 without the GT300 and 8,176 with it. That's a difference of 768. Taking a look at some games next, in terms of CPU temperature in gaming, we saw a significant difference across the board. Unlike with the synthetic load of Cinebench, the temperature was always lower with the GT300 than it was without it. Most significant was the temperature difference in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, where the temperature dropped from a maximum of 106.8 degrees C to just a maximum of 64 degrees C. That's a lower temperature than the CPU's average idle temperature without a cooling pad. So that's quite impressive. Less significant was the difference in Red Dead Redemption and Halo Infinite, but even so, uh, the reduction wasn't insignificant by any means. The GPU temperatures were a little more consistent, for the most part being reduced from 80 something degrees without the cooling pad to 60 something degrees with it. Not a bad reduction in temperature at all, but did this reduction in temperature result in better performance in games? Well, let's go and take a look at that next. And the answer is no. Unfortunately, the reduction in temperature did not translate into any significant gains in average frame rates for some reason. Don't get me wrong, the frame rates were consistently slightly higher with the GT300 as compared to without it, but the difference was slight. I even thought that maybe I wasn't giving the laptop enough time to reach its maximum temperatures, so I did some extended gameplay sessions instead and the results did not change. The same is true for the 1% lows. In fact, 
There was even less of a difference with these, which is why I didn't bother to produce a graph. There was nearly no difference between with and without a cooling pad. So what have we learned about this cooling pad? Well, it definitely works, definitely does what it was supposed to do, and that is reduce the temperatures of the components of the laptop, such as the CPU and the GPU. The temperature differences were huge for the most part, regardless of what was being done, with the exception of Cinebench, but that's okay. While it didn't result in lower temperatures, it did result in a score 10% higher than was achieved with no cooling pad, and that's an amazing uplift. In every game tested and the idle tests, we saw very significant reductions in temperatures on both the CPU and the GPU. As I said earlier, I'm not sure why this didn't translate to much of an improvement in games whatsoever. There must be another bottleneck or a power limit that's being hit instead of a thermal limit. I wonder therefore if I disabled Smart Shift and did some other tweaking perhaps like overclocking for example, whether I would be able to squeeze more performance out of this laptop by using the GT300. I'm betting that I could given the results that we've seen today, but I think that's a task for a future video. So make sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss that. Even though we didn't see a nice boost to gaming performance, I'd still say that the GT300 is a worthy investment if you plan to keep your laptop for a long time. After all, heat is the enemy of electronics longevity. Anyway, as always, Thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments why you think the gaming performance didn't improve, or let me know if there's anything else you would like to see in a future video. And while you're down there, please consider leaving a like. And until next time, goodbye.